Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal giving you the latest and greatest podcast, the Mr. Informal Podcast 142. Yes, we are on 142nd of the Mr. Informal Podcast. It is absolutely ridiculous because it's been this long and still going strong. Yeah, that rhymes. Anyways, please do not forget to add me on Instagram, M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L. And then check out my website, M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com. And again, I hope you are being safe. Uh, uh, we are still in a little pandemic. Vaccine is coming. So please be safe, be cautious, and always stay healthy. So what are the four topics for the Mr. Informal Podcast? And I can let you know right now, these past... Uh, days or even week it's been crazy in the tech industry but um, financial industry but I'm not going to talk about I may talk about it in just a standalone uh, um, take of mine anyways uh, first topic is tech lobbyists yes these uh, social media tech uh, have lobby and spend millions and millions of dollars Number two, Twitter is crowdsourcing their fact checks. I don't even know what that means. Number three, uh, e-commerce or online shopping is slowly plateauing as more vaccine is given to uh, the uh, consumers out there. So I think consumers are starting to go outside and not go online shopping anymore. I think they just want to be out. And then last but not least, during these pandemic, consumers are stressed. Not because of online shopping, not because of even the pandemic. I think it's just a, a another type of stress out there. So those are the four topics for the Mr. Informal Podcast. Again, I hope you are healthy and I hope you are enjoying your day, your night, whatever, wherever you may be. And so let's start the podcast. So topic number one from Hypebeast.com, Facebook, Google, Amazon, and more tech giants spent 65 million dollars 65 million dollars in lobbying last year so according to Washington Post the federal lobbyist closure filed a various tech companies were made available last Friday and indicated across 2020 seven of the largest market players including Amazon Facebook Google Apple Microsoft Twitter and Uber okay I um, did not know why Uber was there, but I can see why. Spent a combine of $64.9 million in lobbying expenditure. Because contributors were Facebook and Amazon, which spent around $20 million and $18 million respectively. Gee, I wonder where the money went to. The lobbying efforts come after the US government has tightened its grip over various companies and platforms in the tech industry, especially in terms of antitrust regulation so let's talk about this you can tell i'm already not happy about this um from my voice because uh we can do especially in 2020 when it was the year of pandemic and we could have done so much so much and these companies could have done so much other than just lobbying 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 because they're scared of being regulated and what pisses me off more is that these companies could have spent that money on small businesses, on helping to those who are in need. I don't like the hobos out there. The hobos should not be helped. But the ones that are facing eviction, the ones that are starting to be homeless, they should put that money into that. What about education? They could have done an online coursing. Again, put money in online coursing. I mean, Facebook could have done more. Google could have done save Apple, Microsoft, Twitter, Amazon. Instead, they were focusing on censoring uh, people. They were focusing on their uh, making. I mean, not making, not fact checking correctly. Instead, they lean on one side. Again, they could have done so much, not only that we as people even let this happen. Heck, even the people in the Washington, um, our nation capital in Washington, D.C., District of Columbia, 
they even let this happen. They even let the lobbying. They should have never even put lobbying. They should have never even prioritized. They should have, you know, they should have said, you know what? Let's see what we got on our plate in terms of pandemic related issue, China virus related issue. Instead, you know what? We're going to buy these politicians with our money. And so, as you know, the nation's capital are just being bought by these uh, companies. And again, these money could have been put in so much. Like the American people have never benefited. I never benefited from this. And not only that, they're still doing it. And they're probably going to get their way with the new administration. I mean, that's what's happening, right? I mean, they're probably going to spend more money on lobbying. They're probably going to even buy out these politicians. And us people are not even doing about it. And so, I am absolutely not happy about it. The fact that the lobbying efforts were happening during a pandemic. And the money could have done, it could have been put into more substantial in actual use instead of lobbying 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 but it's absolutely ridiculous what kind of things that 2020 has uh, shown us it's shown us the most vile and evil type of actions that humans are willing to take so topic number two from again highbees.com twitter is testing crowdsource fact checking feature i mean they could have done that maybe many many years ago it's continued the effort to better spread misinformation of its platform. Twitter is now testing a new involving crowdsourcing fact checking to its users. Name Birdwatch. The new test will be available will be first available in the US and involve just a small group of users to begin with. Those who apply and participate can pick various tweets, define and uh, add their own notes to it, just like various fact checking websites currently existing. Users will also be able to rate each other's notes to safeguard against unintentional manipulation. For now, those notes will only appear on a separate Birdwatch site. But Twitter hopes to integrate those comments once the feature officially rolls out. Everyone, Birdwatch allows people to identify information in tweets they believe is misleading with write notes that provide informative text. So I have a question on this one, and I haven't done much further research on this. What if we're talking about politicians here? Uh, are politicians going to get a special treatment um is the bird watch feature not um apply to politicians what about twitter's own ceo does the bird watch applies to it i need to know not only that the worst part about it is that twitter is crowdsourcing they could not hire their own people just to do this maybe have hire balanced people who can fact check actual fact check if this happens and this happens instead they're rely, relying on card source what about these crowds are these crowdsourcers going to get paid i mean i i need to know what if the tweet tweet is actually wrong or they able to delete it i mean what's gonna happen this is a slippery slope as to what twitter is doing not only that why now again i'm trying to ask myself they could not do this many 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 years ago even before trump even before obama i mean they could not do this I'm trying to wonder where their ideas are coming from and I want to know what goes into these meetings. To me, this is a disappointing news, disappointing action, crowdsource, like you don't need crowdsourcing. You can just hire people to do this and actually hire the right amount, the right type of people, like a balanced people with no remorse, facts are facts, no ifs or buts or whatever. You know, you have a standard that you go by and you can't lean on one side. If you're going to agree to this or fact check this and suddenly don't fact check this or not fact check the other one correctly, 
then what's the point of even having a pack check if you can't have a standard? Um, it is absolutely disappointing that they are just doing this now. I mean, I don't care if it's all oh, better late than never. No, 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 no. I'm not accepting that. The fact that Twitter is not having a standard, it's just one, again, it's just one of those depends, ifs or buts or whatever, whatever. It's absolutely disappointing. And I'm glad I don't have Twitter. I never had Twitter. I know people that have Twitter, but I never had it. And I don't want to have it. And I'm not into it at all. And I don't care about the kind of character limits. And if Twitter burns down or, you know, I don't even, the people don't like it anymore, that's fine with me. That is absolutely fine with me. So here's something I don't have sources on but i'm pretty sure you you know what i'm talking about and so as the world is getting vaccinated slowly but surely i know it's not fair it's still slow and there are priorities out there uh, such as people who work in the medical field getting vaccinated same with older people those vulnerable people are getting vaccinated certainly um i understand that and but at the same time uh uh, the economy or whatever you are the country economy is slowly opening up, opening up even though um, many of the countries are still in some type of quarantine rules but still uh, hope is out there you know it's slowly very slowly the uh, restaurants the barbershops salons uh, restaurants bars are slowly opening up so the con uh, slow businesses are opening up small businesses I mean are opening up um, there's going to be a plateau as to where um, as to people are going to stop online shopping and people are going to go going to go out more and uh, the rate of online shopping will slow down it might even go down people may pre pre uh, prefer buying their clothes in the physical brick and mortar store and so that's what I'm. That's what I mean by the slow e-commerce. Is basically the slow sales of online shopping because people are sick and tired, just like me, always having to buy online over and over. Instead, I would rather just be out there, uh, see it in person, try it on in person, and have physical interaction with people and be out. You know anywhere be out instead of being you know in your house in your in your front or backyard or in your room wherever just be out you know take a road trip you know take a flight somewhere and so you're not going to see people shopping much and so it's going to be interesting as to no don't get me wrong online shopping will still go up it's still going up but at the rate of people buying shop uh, buying online is gonna slow down compared to what it was last year or even even Black Friday so it's not gonna be the same most likely we're gonna see a rise in purchases of physical stores retail stores um, have a higher rate of purchase than online uh, I mean look don't get me wrong uh, I know the virus is still out there, but people just want to be out. And so, it's, it's you're going to see a lot more people at the mall, that's for sure. Don't even, it, it, it is what it is. But at the same time, at least people are out. They may not be in the mall, they may be out somewhere at the beach or some uh, Disneyland, uh, some type of uh, restaurants or wherever, or they're enjoying the company of their friends, family, or some. Uh, new people out there and so people are not going to be on the computer tied up in the computer and buying 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 all the time so uh, certainly uh, online e-commerce the purchase of online e-commerce is going to plateau I'm not saying it's gonna stop but it's certainly going to slow down so that's topic for this podcast from retaildive.com the middle class is stressed and the pandemic isn't helping. The consumer spending is inhibited by not only stubborn wealth gap, but also the precarious finances of those who are doing okay. 
So, nearly a year into China virus pandemic, it's difficult to remember that until recently a, the US economy was enjoying a decade long expansion. Um, decade long expansion meaning the economy was booming, it was great. The, even then, however, consumers often seem constrained. That could be because only top 20% of U.S. households have fully recovered from the Great Recession, according to Brookings Institute. What does Great Recession mean? In 2016, the top 1% of households had held more wealth than the middle class, a reversal from before 2010, Brookings also found. So, the problem after the pandemic the pandemic made things worse. Personal income in November was down uh, 20, uh, 221 uh, billion or 1.1 percent disposal. Personal income fell 218 billion. Not only that, some 10 million jobs disappeared uh, from February 10th to December last year, and the holiday season was marked by bargain hunting due to pandemic-related job and income loss. Now. Uh, those entering the new year out of work, including long-time employees with more than 40% of job seekers losing their jobs because of the pandemic, according to Challenger Great Christmas, an executive coaching and uh, outplacement firm. One thing was clear, there's a lot of pain occurring right now, Andrew Challenger said in an email comments regarding calls fielded by the firm early in the year. Many calls reportedly they were out of work for the first time in their lives, but they had no idea how to even uh, get started with the process. So, basically consumers, us consumers are stressed not because of, I think the pandemic is part of it, but it's basically a collective reasons as to why we are stressed. It reminds me of work. It's not just one thing, it's a lot of things why you're stressed at work. Number one is the loss of work. Number two is certainly income. Number three is definitely the pandemic. Number four could be the quarantine. You can't go out, so and so. And last but not least, number five is the wealth gap. Meaning, and the, you know, it's it's a the middle class is narrowing. It's getting smaller. So you have the rich and the poor. That's all it is. Instead of the middle class. And so when you add all of that. Of course, people are people like me are stressed. I mean, there is no ifs or buts about it. There's no sugar coating it. Not only that, we just went through the uh, election, and so you got people fighting, uh, screaming and shouting, so and so, and then suddenly, you know, you just what just happened with. The GameStop stock, and so we've seen how the stock market is actually rigged by the wealth, by the wealthy, and us, no average people, wants a piece of the cake, but they don't, they don't want us to have that, and so people are mad, people are stressed. I mean, you know. If stress is the same type of word as mad, then sure. But people are not happy. That's for sure. People are irritated. People are frustrated. I mean, as you can tell, some people are out of work for the first time and they don't even know where to start. Well, for one thing, is that we need to clear our mind. We need to have a focus. You know, stop with this, you stop being on social media. You know, maybe improving yourself, maybe do some kind of hobby, maybe fix the house or clean the house or apartment, wherever. Have some type of focus. You do it one at a time and then fix your resume, update your resume, upgrade your resume and start looking for work online. And so uh, there's a lot of things happening these days. But certainly uh, I don't blame the average consumer being stressed because there are so many things that are happening out there that we are all affected by. And so I can't blame anybody who's stressed because they lost work. I can't blame anybody because um, their loss of income or maybe uh, lowered income. And so 
hopefully 2021 is going to be a great year for us consumers and maybe we'll have some type of happiness out there and certainly content is is still far away but certainly happiness is we all is something that we all reach for even in our old lives and so that basically concludes this mr informal podcast 142 I hope you enjoy uh, this week's podcast and I hope you listen to me from the beginning to end. Uh, you, l- you learned something, gave you some deep insights and again, I appreciate you listening to me. Uh, again, please do, get, do not forget to add me on Instagram M-I-S-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L and check out my website mrinformal.com M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com And please, again, be healthy, stay healthy, be cautious. It's not over yet. Uh, we're getting there. And again, I will see you in the next podcast. Bye-bye.